Um, hello everyone, welcome to Dubai Wave. My name is Dana here. I'm alongside Professor Spencer Stryker and we are interviewing UFC fighter Tam Khan and gym owner of TK MMA and Fitness in Dubai. Uh, Tam, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Yeah, um, as you know, my name is Tam, <laughs> you got the name <laughs> correct. Um, I, have I moved to Dubai around 2008, July 2008, and uh, I had a little bit of vision and dream to bring mixed martial arts and bring a mainstream to the Middle East. Okay. And so far, Humble Life's been successful and uh, over a year ago, I opened my own branded friend, like gym facility, TK LMA Fitness. Mm -hmm. TK obviously standing for my name and uh, it's been very successful in the first year. We won an award for the best gym facility in the Middle East via Ahlan Magazine. We've had many personalities trained there from sports to socialites and this and that. So it's got a good following and uh, that's just a step in that's just the first step in many things we're looking at, like apparel, uh, marketing, athletes, agencies, and things like that. So I'm looking for another branch now towards the other side of Dubai, downtown, mm -hmm. as well as promoting professional events again. I've kind of put a halt to that in 2014, so mm -hmm. I'm looking to go back into uh, hosting events. Okay, that's cool. Um, I just wanted to go back in the past. You said that you were born in London, and I heard that you used to play football. Okay, what position did you used to play? Uh, midfield. midfield. I mean, yeah, because in England, that's the sport. Yeah. Like in the States, you have uh, yeah. basketball, American football. It just It's football. Yeah. You, you guys call it soccer, maybe, in the States. Yeah. Uh, so everyone does that. So just it's just the most loved sport. So everyone just, you just play. It's quite good. I liked some track and field, too. But in UK, it's not really pushed as much. But also, I used to love combat. But mm -hmm. again, it's just opportunities where you live, which area, where to train. Okay. So I started with football and then until I fell in love with uh, mixed martial arts, you know, so. Okay. So what, um, when did you actually get into mixed martial arts? I actually boxed amateur boxing, just for like confidence in the self-defense. My mother put me there because mm -hmm. the area I was in was kind of like uh, very uh, Caucasian and I was one of the, we're the only like Muslim or <laughs> ethnic family. So mm -hmm. my mom was nervous, you were in school, just know how to defend yourself. So I took a liking to boxing and things like that, and I just became a natural and just enjoyed it. But for confidence and discipline reasons, it wasn't just to compete. And then I actually uh, watched the UFC, the first one with Hoyce Gracie. Mm -hmm. It was in 93, so I maybe watched it in 95. My friend brought a VHS tab and uh, we're like, wow, this little small guy in this outfit is beating all these big kind of muscle guys, and he's doing these moves. We didn't know what they were. It just was like amazing. So we were checking out what is going to video shops, buying magazines, reading. Before the internet. Before the internet, yeah. magazines sort of yeah. thing. And it was like the, the hardest family in the world. They used technique, they didn't use power and this and that. So it was just like a crazy sense. So it was a mad. And it was just, there are no rules. Not like boxing where we knew Tyson's, the Arlies and everything. Mm -hmm. This was just like two men in this kind of cage and just, there were no rules those days, no gloves. Martial art be martial art, boxing be kickboxing or mm -hmm. wrestler versus taekwondo. And it was just, the, the best man will win, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was like there was no limit. You'll, sh you'll see which martial art wins. And uh, mm -hmm. Hoist Gracie introduced something called the Gracie Jiu Jitsu, which is known right. now as a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Right. And uh, I had a love for that, so I was like, wow. But then I tried to investigate are there any gyms? How do I uh, learn this? Like in the UK, it was so new. Mm -hmm. In the States, they were light years ahead. They have college wrestling and this and that. So there's more opportunities. So, um, and by chance, I'm walking in my high street in this small suburban town called South End on Sea. And there was this local tough guy in the area when I was young, everyone was going, he's the man. And uh, we kind of knew each other. And uh, in his shop, he had a restaurant, Italian restaurant, he had an advert, uh, I teach Gracie Jiu Jitsu. And I was like, <laughs> I thought it was a dream, what the hell? So I went yeah, in and spoke okay. to him. And he went to LA, Torrance, California, to learn from the Gracie's. He took holidays like this. You had to be hardcore and have money to do in those days. So he was a student off Hoist. Walked in there and the rest was history. I just started training with him in this like church hall like three of us, and uh, cool. just got hooked on it. How would you describe Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and why was that the dominant fighting form when MMA started, in your opinion? It was just ahead of its time at the po point where boxing was so famous and kickboxing, no one really knew the art of uh, grappling. You had the high school wrestlers or the wrestlers in the States, but these guys would go for 
national titles or Olympic dreams. So right. in professional sport, apart from WWE, which was not really, it's not right. real, yeah. there was no way for grapplers to go. So they brought this art where, okay, you have a wrestler that takes you down, but that's it, he pins you and then he gets up, you know, the pin to look to win. Yeah. With this, there's submissions, how to put someone to sleep, how to take the arm and make them tap. It was very new. Judo, again, judo's for hundreds of years, but it's just ip on, take them down, mm -hmm. you win. So, uh, Jiu-Jitsu continues on the floor, you keep going until someone submits or right. passes out. So that's why it's dominant. And Horace Gracie, was, he knew an art which no one else knew, so you'd get guys grab him, but he'd somehow choke them or yep. do a move where you didn't know how to uh, combat it. And it seems to me from watching MMA that m most fights, at least early on, would go to the ground at some point. Yeah. And then that's where Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu mm -hmm. would dominate. Right. Yeah, I mean, every fight, if you take the referee out of boxing, unless you really are lucky with one punch, you're going to clinch. That's why the referee's there, break. It's mm -hmm. natural. Right. You go on the street, right, to be about, everyone clinches, they grab, they scuffle, yeah. shirts get ripped. Mm -hmm. It's just human nature to grab. Right. So this art knows that. They know you're going to grab something. Or, so that's why they used to wear the outfit by purpose. He used yeah. to wear it, so you'd grab him. So he's got you and just control you. Mm -hmm. Now it's more of an art. People are learning their... There's no uniforms you can wear, it's topless, everyone's a bit oiled up. So mm. now it's really evolved a lot, but that's why it was very impressive. It was more mm. for street self-defense, what it was invented for. Yep. The smaller man to d survive against the bigger man. But then he showed that and the world just went crazy and it just, a company like that, I remember the first one in a, some small hall, thousand people to now, the UFC just sold for 4.2 billion. Mm -hmm. Right. And like, you know, 24, yeah. 25 years, amazing. Okay. Absolutely. It's an amazing sport. Mm. I really like watching UFC. Uh, so, Tom, every fighter has a more dominant side, yeah. whether it's in Muay Thai or Jiu Jitsu. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, which one you prefer? Do you I love prefer the striking? Or? I love striking, but I, grappling's more my thing. I just, yeah. it's, I fell in love with that and I just forgot about everything else. Okay. So, I love, I love the submission. I think it's more artistic. Anyone, the knockout's beautiful, but it doesn't sell the sport well. It looks brutal. Yeah. So, if you yeah. want to show the art of a martial art, the submissions, it's just more sexy, as we say, you know? More technique. Yeah, it's more technique, and it's just more impressive, and it's just, I have won fights where I haven't even thrown a punch, just control yeah. and tapped, and just, you get up. So, it's a better way of even selling or marketing the sport, especially when it's got a bad stigma around it, you know? Mm -hmm. It's human mm -hmm. cockfighting, it's violent. Mm -hmm. When you show more submissions, it, it gets it gains more respect. Um, what advice would you give someone wanting to take up the competitive fighting scene in the UAE? When it comes to MMA? First of all, uh, depends. speak to your family or parents, like it depends on your age. Get their permission first. I've had many come to me, then I've had issues with parents who didn't, weren't informed. And yeah. It's very important because, again, the stigma around it, unless if you're not educated of the sport, it seems very violent or like Fight Club, the movie, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. You're going to go kill. It's not like that. But uh, first that. Then secondly, it's not part-time. If you want to really get to that level, it's got to be full-time. You cannot have a job then. Yeah. Train on, yeah. Because yeah. it's either you go the whole way and take that blood, sweat, and tears, and really go for it. But it's difficult because it, a lot of these guys do it because of circumstances, social circumstances, or how they're raised. It, these factors come into becoming this. You know, it's not something which you go, I like it, and it's very tough. You know, to be that. Yeah. I mean, the professor will tell you in America that the, the college level of sport, like it's there. It's, yeah. mm -hmm. the, they have got it's insane. It's, you can't understand how they train. 15, 16 year olds, the way they look physically, you know? Mm -hmm. Trying to be in the NFL or things like amateur wrestling at 10 years old. Go to Russia's yeah. the same, so. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit yeah, less here. Yeah. So it's, it's just it's a new city. Uh, Dubai is quite a yeah. new uh, playground and it's new and it's just, this lifestyle is a bit different. So it's, mm -hmm. it's very tough. So I tell someone to do it, you have to put 110% in it. I just want to see just the effort you put for that, at least six, seven months, yeah. the training to deal with criticism, to deal with the hard times. That will show if you can handle it or not. You know, it's amazing because uh, being a member at your, gym, in my, at your gym myself, I see all the kids training at a very young age. Mm. And I remember I was actually paired up with one of them in one of the practices, mm -hmm. and he kicked me really hard. Oh, yeah? yeah. And it was How amazing. How old was the kid? They were they're about like eight, nine. Wow. It's, it's amazing, really. Yeah. Um, I mean, the majority here uh, is more for, like, yourself, yeah. fitness enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. But again, I say... There's talent, but it's also nothing beats hard work. Yeah, it overcomes true. talent all day. So mm -hmm. if a talent guy doesn't train hard, the hard work will always win. And I always stick by that. Whatever you push and strive to do, you can, but you have to put the time in. Yeah, if you I, be a doctor, I totally you, agree with yeah, that. Yeah, if you want to be a doctor, you have to go do those 10, 12 years. Yeah, Lawyer, the same true. thing. Overnight law school, it's just not so easy. So 
without hard work, it's not easy. I mean, unfortunately, with the YouTube generation, everyone watches it, thinks it's easy, they're mm. practicing at home. Mm. It, it's very difficult. So that's what separates the, uh, the, cre the elite to the, you know, mm. standbys or the viewers. Okay. Have you had any um, clients have come to you say they want to learn MMA and really had great success? Yeah, I've had a few. Uh, I had one Russian uh, kid in 2010. I was one of the most talented kids well, I've ever met. He was superb. I had brought a few UFC guys who watched him. Anderson Silva was shocked. Like, a lot of the top games, uh, this guy's got talent. Mm -hmm. But then the wildlife spoils them. They, they want to impress the girls. They, they want to buy, yeah. they, they drive this car. So it kind of the clubbing. And it's, so again, it's discipline. He had mm -hmm. all the tools, but the discipline wasn't there. Okay. Mm. Have many, I've had guys who unfortunate injury, and also I've had some Emirati talented guys, but the parents. The they can't compete. One guy is very tough. So it, it's always maybe a factor there. There's some up and coming again, but uh, it's just a matter of uh, offering them the same tools that everyone else gets. For example, the States, it's hard to find the support unit sponsorship. Mm -hmm. I mean, to fight full time, you need sponsors. How are they going to live? They need some kind of fun. Yeah. yeah. So I can give them free. I can do it as much as I can, but mm -hmm. they need to survive as well. Yeah. And it's tough, yeah. you know? It's very new here. So this, this is the future. It'll take time to build that kind of, you know? That's why I want to do management more, try and look after them this way. That's cool. um, well, nowadays, this whole women empowerment is, uh, is rising. And what would you say? Would, would you say it's easy also for women to play a sport like this and compete here in the UAE? Or is it a little bit harder? Yeah. It, look, it depends. Again, it's a stigma, especially Muslim women. Mm -hmm. It's very tough, you know, to come out of that. But again, it depends on your support team, the woman, her family, if they're understanding. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but I never say play sport when it's MMA. I never use the word play. I hate that. I'm sorry. I'm joking, yeah. no. I heard her say it. I was wondering if you were going to yeah. take issue. It's one term that. I always heard the yeah. buy. No, Fine. you're okay. But when a guy's going, I want to play, you, we don't play it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trust me, I can show you scars. And yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, uh, you play football, you play basketball, you don't play fight. Fight. Yeah. But yeah, for sure, I love it. I have an Iranian girl now, super talented. She's not a talent, actually. She came just to lose weight, and now she's doing four hours a day mm -hmm. and personal training every day on top of that. The money she's putting into it. She wants to travel and she's really improving. It's amazing. So I said to her, I'm going to look down the line and look in her to build her. But for now, just the basics. You have to like walk before you can run. Okay. And people want to, you cannot, you can't leap these years. You have to do the basics. It's the basics which matter, the drills, you know. Once you get that, then you can start experimenting what works for you. But you have to get that. And once you can do that, the rest is easy. Okay. So you mentioned that it does take a lot of money for sponsorship and it does take a lot of money to to put in all the work and the time. So a few years back in an interview, you mentioned that your gym was not for profit as much as it is to mm. spread the, the sport of fighting. So would you say that changed now? Not have changed. You see, to survive, fighters don't pay bills. Mm -hmm. So I have those guys, I have many who want to compete, they, fight, they train for me free, mm -hmm. like so many. I don't ask for nothing. When they fight, I don't take a percentage because what are they going to make? 2,000 dirhams. I'm not going to take 20%. I'll say something, if you ever make it big, then you know, you can, I'm like this. Mm -hmm. I support the many like from Soviet nation, ex-Soviet nation, Russians who don't really know their weights here. They, they're struggling, have many. But what I learned with that, that's my passion, the hardcore thing. That's why mm -hmm. I tend to sit back with the training because for me to do the basics, it's very t I like to see someone who wants to go because I'm very hard on them. Mm -hmm. And you, you don't intimidate your customers, it's business. Yeah. So my old gym was kind of intimidating. You'd see not, you'd see this and that, but a lot of the UAE-based biggest names in combat came from this gym. Mm -hmm. Like the guys called like Munir Sniper, who teams in Nogueira, or Abdullah Abraham, they all came from me originally. So uh, see, some of them made success in business, this and this, but uh, it doesn't pay the bill. So you have to survive in a way so you can offer that too. Mm -hmm. Because 96% is fitness enthusiasts. Yeah. They just want to come, I want a personal trainer, or I like watching it. Corporates work in property fine in Dubai or banks, they don't want to fight. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they like... It's escapism from the stresses of work, so they just want to punch something. Not get so. Outlet. Yeah, you have, fight club, so yeah. Like. you have to watch that. So I know who the pros are. So I'll have separate times. No one will see that. I know who's the ones who want to. You know, they'll come to me and I'll, I'll watch them and see. And uh, I, I, I notice everything. I don't tell them, but I can see. I see who's. I can just assess who's got what it takes or who. Not even talent. Who's putting the effort. So then from there, I'll speak to them and I can. But when they talk, I, I just present. I say, okay, but I just assess them without them knowing. You know, they think I, I see everything. So. What, so, someone comes to you, how are you assessing them, for example? Like, somebody, what, what are you looking at? First of all, effort and the way they just keep trying. Like, 
Small, but the basics are this, for example, you'll, a coach will show a technique three, four times. I'll see how easy it's one. You can see each person, but how easy one picks up over another. Okay. That understanding, that, the way the brain thinks, yeah. yeah. That's one asset. It's very important. Yeah. Like, I have some students who are quite tough, but they, they still, two years down the line, are struggling with the basic. So that shows the way they're thinking. It's like, for example, Floyd Mayweather. Mm -hmm. People say his mind is so sharp. Maybe not intellectually in the academic department, but this but, thinking, his way of thinking is very, very sharp. Mm -hmm. That's why he's so good. He sees things two, three steps ahead. These things, this is how you assess this. Or, or I'll see another one who maybe is not that good, but his effort, I will watch how he comes in, how he's always early, discipline, that matters a lot. Mm -hmm. If you have a kid walking off during the class just to go for a toilet break, it annoys me. Mm -hmm. when I, I couldn't, if I was one minute late, the coach locked the door, you can't come to class. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you took a water break without asking him, you're gonna get kicked. I'm guilty with that. You know? <laughs> but discipline is so important because that's why martial arts is to discipline you. If you see guys who are professional athletes, you, they will never see, see them shouting or acting tough. Mm -hmm. It's the ones who want uh, egos, you know, you go to these bars. Most professionals are quiet, so they don't have anything to prove. They, they're disciplining themselves. So that's what you have to check. What about size, though? I mean, obviously you're a big guy. If you, if you want to be an MMA fighter, do you, are you assessing them based on how big they are? No, no, no. Size, uh, it's not about the size of the dog. It's about the size of the fight. There's weight groups. It's just genetically, I'm this weight, you know? Uh, everyone has their size. If you look at small guys like Conor McGregor, so Mayweather, yeah, he's for me, lightweight. pound for pound, the most purest box there's ever been. <laughs> Whatever his attitude is, is different. Mm -hmm. like he's tiny. I'm, he's like here to me. Like if I tried to box him, I wouldn't see a punch. Mm -hmm. So, size, you'll see guys like Klitschko who are big, but they're just boring, you know? It's all about everyone's just born differently genetically, so that's why there's weight divisions. Yeah. Because after a time you all learn the same thing, it's not fair. The bigger guy will win if you know the same techniques because of just genetics or physics. So you need to have these divisions because everyone's born differently, but it doesn't matter. Okay. The power's not in the muscle, it's on the core and the hip and how you use the technique. Mm -hmm. Hence the Gracies and this the whole style is just leverage. And Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao, all these guys, you know? Yeah. Um, okay, so aside from being a UFC fighter, you had something in, in you that drove you into becoming an entrepreneur as well. And I want to know what, what made you think that Dubai was the place to come and start all of this. How did you know it was going to pick up? That's what, never, UFC is like the big, I'm not, I never fought in UFC, it's okay. clear, it makes martial arts fight, I fought every, but UFC is like, I know a lot of people in Dubai don't, yeah. it's the Super Bowl. Yeah. It's like you have all these teams, but the Super Bowl is the mecca of MMA. Um, yeah, for me, I've, I've always, because I studied, I've, I've, I went to uni, everything as well, I always think outside the box because when I started, mate, it was, in UK, it was, you'd fight, for, I mean, some fights, they give you ticket money, you spend it on petrol, get into the fight, you drive yourself and fight. It, it was a passion, it wasn't for money then, you know, it was just, mm -hmm. I love the sport. Now it's different, and even now it's tough because it's a monopoly, one show, and unless you have the charisma, you can be the best fight in the world. If you cannot sell pay-per-view, it's a business, mm -hmm. you will not get in UFC. There's guy, I go to Moscow, a lot of Russians who are just animals who could beat probably every UFC fighter, but they can't talk, they can't speak English, they're just very shy, they don't look marketable, so they'll never make it. It's, it's marketable, it's all about marketing and putting bums in seats because it's, it's all about pay-per-views and TV, it's a, it's a business now. So for me, like, I always said, look, fighting's passion, but it's not going to pay, what's it going to do? So, but it's my passion, the thing with me is I, I believe in, like, do what you love and love what you do. I, I can't sit in an office... I can't, uh, I've done it before, but I cannot, not arrogant, not like I have a boss, but it's just, I'm not going to pretend, I, I want to do what I enjoy. Then you really work hard and you, you enjoy your money. You know? If you're passionate journalist, and that's good. Mm -hmm. I'm not one of those guys who just wants to work, pay bills and die. Yeah. I don't want to. I'd rather risk, have some bad times, good times, but then I wake, I enjoy it's passion. So that's, when you do that, then you become, get successful, in my At opinion. At what point in your career were you able to not have a day job and do this full time? At some I mean, point there was a transition to that. Right? Yeah, I was saying, but when I was young, I was quite, kind of like the bad boy as well. So you meet certain characters in these gyms. <laughs> you have characters like who has to hang around the boxing gym. Anyway. So you're like little hustling kids. You know, like you do stupid things. You try and go, oh, I want to have that car. I want to be like him. You look up to Mike Tyson. I want to look like that. I want. Why do the girls like him? I want to be that. It's a stupid kids thing. Yeah. So you're always meeting these people. How do I do this? And But I always had a good business mind. Even like younger, I'd like... Uh, when I was in school, 
I'd be getting spring sweets selling to people or oh, okay. the new phones. I was always doing this. Like, I always was thinking business wise. I was just, yeah. when other kids were going to get drunk, I don't drink, I just want to make money. Yeah. And they're like, where'd you buy these new like Game Boys? Because I'm making money. <laughs> You're just, that was me always. So, um, but then I came to Dubai many times on holiday and I loved it. And I remember I had a fight coming up. So I thought when I'm in Dubai, I'll find a gym. And I was looking into everywhere and I couldn't find anything. I was like, Dubai is this hub. Everyone talks about Dubai, but there's nowhere to train. So I found one gym which had like Taekwondo. It was really bad. One for jiu-jitsu, so I had to go there. And I was just saying, is there any gyms? There was no punch bag. So I thought, hey, then I went back to UK. And it was just gloomy, depressing. And I was like, hey, I got that Dubai needs this because everyone was talking about it. I used to watch the news and it's going to boom. And it's like Qatar now. Mm -hmm. So I said, all right, so you know what? I'm going to try that. And I was fed up. I was working like in some uh, sales company, managing it. But it was just depressing, like in some kind of common town where the clientele was just, it's like a redneck area, you call it America, you know? So, so I was like, you know, I came back from the sun to this and I said, oh, that's it, I'm gonna, I'll take risks, you know? Was I married, was single, so I thought it's a good time. I saw all my friends doing the same thing, same weekend, same Groundhog Day, so I said, listen, I'm bored of this. And uh, you stay in those kind of areas, you end up in trouble or you don't prosper because people, everyone around you is just the same. So you don't, no one has a vision. I always did, there was, they wouldn't, I know guys who've never left their county in England. Back in the States, never says, you know, like that's how they think. They wouldn't go to. Yeah. And it's just depressing. It's not like Dubai, it's a very different country. So I thought, I can't do this. I used to like traveling. So I, said, I knew one person here. I said, I'm going to go there and try an idea. I flew over here and uh, stayed on the couch for like a few weeks. And uh, they offered me a job of fitness first. First day I walked in, I looked around and I just walked out. I said, I can't do this. Pressure. Started hustling, yeah. So I went through gyms and uh, started sparring some guys, beating up some, had a black, black belt from Brazil, mm -hmm. the Sheikh. From Abu Dhabi, employed many, and they were in all the gyms teaching. And I was tapping and beating them quite easy, and they were like, What are you doing? So I said to this guy who owned the gym, Can I use your space? I want to teach a, a, a real style which works. And uh, it was going ahead. And once a reporter found out about it, called him seven days and said, Listen, I want to do an article. What is this cage fighting? Blah, blah, blah. So he did an article. It was a front page. And the next day, they put my mobile number, and it was like, Pff, Calls, calls, calls. Yeah, cool. And this room was like this big, and it was just packed. And that's it, it just took off. And that was in your own gym? That wasn't. I was hiring a. I was hiring a room in some kind of do. Yeah, it was near Messiah Center on Sheikh Zayed Road, small and then from dojo. There you took the, the success of having all these clients. Into yeah. Starting your then own I realized gym. I needed space. Then I had the idea of making a gym which offers other services, specific for combat. I did that, and then from there, I understood business more. When you're in business, you network. You meet other guys. You meet this. You see, blueprints. You see what works. To the point where I know I understood it more to where I've got to now. Like. Don't concentrate too much on this, that. Offer that, but co concentrate on an everyday person. Just wants to get fit, mm. be welcoming, not so intimidating. So uh, it takes time, experience, but then you get to a point where you know what everyone wants to see. So you've got to not look in your shoes. You've got to look at like like your dad's shoes or the everyday Joe. If I, they don't want to see a big guy shirtless, tattoos, punching a bag in the gym, you know. Yeah. It's intimidating yeah. for yeah. most people. Yeah. 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 So spring the gym is welcoming everyone. A lot of women mix this, this, this. Beginners classes, more boxer, less sparring, and mm -hmm. but offer gym, offer CrossFit, offer the, and mm -hmm. then it mixes to one. So you say, okay, join gym, but you have this option of this, try it out, yeah. get fit and enjoyable, yeah. and you got to do it like that. So yeah. then market off UFC as you see on TV, the UFC, you can use that, but this is more, you know. So was yours okay. the first MMA gym in Dubai? Yeah, the first uh, contender MMA we launched, first ever. Yeah, and uh, first also MMA promotion I started as well. I think 2011, Dubai Fight Championship. So yeah. I think you started a trend, because yeah. there's MMA fitness I, now. Yeah. They're yeah, your there's, competitors. There's, there's, yeah, like, there's, not, there's many gyms, but for competitors, I don't see them competitors because yeah. the blueprint we use is kind of, we still have that slogan, real fighters, real training. Everyone I employ has I mean, been professional or the top of their game. That's the one thing. I always want to keep the quality. Yeah. You know? So, but anyway, actually, it helps to create more awareness yeah. around MMA anyway. So it's going to lead more people to you. Like own. OSN helped a lot. Andy Walkman, I was with uh, when I had a programming. Uh, how you know, he's, they bought the rights again. I remember him when I was speaking then. I remember the UFC. I helped one FC promote. I helped UFC. A lot of the fighters prepare, helping market it. So we've worked, you know, I've done a lot of things media-wise and just get it, spread the word, bring in big stars over here to do seminars. Now we've got like Lindsay Lohan training in our gym evenings. You've got Jean Claude Van Damme came. So it's funny. It's just that's awesome. Yeah, it's just gone crazy. You know, it's just yeah. changed. Okay, so uh, you mentioned that you are planning an expansion, hopefully in the downtown area. Uh, besides from that, are you planning on taking it to different countries, maybe back home or anything? Yeah, I mean, 
UK economy wise, it's not the right time. Mm -hmm. I love UK. Mm -hmm. I have my original gym there, so I respect my coach. It's always that loyalty stays there. I mm -hmm. believe if you're not loyal to the ones who helped you in the beginning, I wouldn't want to compete with him. And you know, okay. I've offered him ideas. I'll bring some money. We'll do something. But he, I like his hardcore. It's that old one we all started from. Leave it as that. Yeah. Maybe it's some other part area one day. But I'm definitely here. I've been offered many people from Moscow to Doha. Set many ideas. Franchise. Not yet because I want to be selective how they do it and mm -hmm. I want to be hands-on. Mm -hmm. So take our time, but apparel, things like this, clothing, step-by-step, step, you know, I want to build it slowly and uh, management, looking to fight as athletes and things like that. And uh, also, I'm best, like, not so much professional athletes, but like fight models or this, that, pursue this kind of aspect as well, which is quite popular now, you know, so. Okay. And what about fighting? Uh, don't you miss being in the cage? I mean, you yeah, I do. I love. Uh, it's just, it's just like escapism. I used to love that base. Yeah. Like I said, if I go, I have to fight at a certain level, and you can't just uh, turn up, run a business, do that. Sparse students. Yeah. I need to go travel to the states, get my ass kicked, um, my butt kicked a little bit. So <laughs> <laughs> buy some. Yeah, you know, train with lions to become a lion. That's the only way, and you'd have to go for six months. Yeah, definitely. Just to, do it way. all the way, or don't do it. Yeah, yeah. and I'd hate to come back. You know, it's, it's just my last four or five fights, I wasn't even training. I was in Dubai just for mm -hmm. traveling, training with students. I'd have a guy holding pads, my friend who was, he didn't know what to do. I'd be jogging, doing my own push ups and going mm -hmm. fight. So I never even trained. So it just, I just like doing it. So, like you said, you have, uh, my passion is always there. But it's just, uh, you've got to be realistic too. I don't want to be these like punch drunk uh, old men who don't understand. <laughs> it's different. <laughs> you have to just know what's the. Best way. What's yeah. The, what's the best fight you ever had, and what's the worst fight? Be curious. Yeah, but the worst fight's losing. <laughs> of course, it's losing. Losing for me, it's like I, I'm not one of those guys who say it's, it's a learning experience. No, for me, losing, it's depression. Like I see people when I have students lose, and they just celebrate after, happy. I'm like, what are you doing? Like you should be at home depressed. That's how much you should want to win. I don't yeah. understand this whole concept. Yeah. I've never understood it. But then you look back and blame yourself. Why did I train? Why did I be cocky? Why did I do it? And I'm like, for me, I had so many which were not even registered because until it was professionally authorized in the UK, I, I used to fight so much. Mm. Then when the records came, it was official sport you could put it on. Mm. So I had so many, like, uh, mm -hmm. countless good ones, this ones. Mm -hmm. But um, I think the best ones when you're just pure good technique. As I got older and it's more sportsmanship, before I was too aggressive, you shake the hand, get up, and it's done, squashed. It's easy, one, two minutes. It's quick win, not touched, one minute, and then just fresh. I remember I won one fight in like 50 seconds and the next day I did a wrestling championship in the UK and I won gold medal. So in 24 hours I did two tournaments and I was still fresh because I was like, that was a good weekend, you know? Because if I was, had a bad fight, I wouldn't have entered the tournament the next day. So I thought, yeah. I, I won quick, I'm, I'm not even uh, stiff. So I went to this tournament and did that. So that was quite, things like that are good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's like, it's, a, it's not even the pressure. You don't feel anything. It's the pressure of your fan, friends and fans and family and sports. That's the pressure. I didn't. I used to like just sparring and fight. I didn't like the whole crowd because you feel, oh, my family's here. Oh God, you're thinking of them. You're not thinking. And if you go in like that, you've lost already. You have to have tunnel vision. Yeah. Mm. Um, have you ever entered a fight angry or with the purpose of fighting that specific person? Did you ever have? Yeah, angry? one or two. But met fight. It was so. Um, there's no. Uh, there was no uh, sanctioned body. So. I'd come to weigh-ins fights. On the day, they've changed the opponent an hour late, mm -hmm. an hour before the fight. Okay. Different weight, this, that. I'm like, yeah. it was so corrupt in those days. If yeah. promoting, it, it was so many times it's happened to me. Mm -hmm. So it was annoying. You're thinking, wait, I've prepared for someone else, and you'll find someone totally different style. Yeah. So I had, these fine. were my losses from these kind of changes. That all one fight, I had to cut so much weight. Uh, they changed the weight. So I came out like an alien in the sauna, steam room, and I, I just mm -hmm. rehydrated badly, and I couldn't even clinch. You know, just... Lack of water in the system. These things are just, it's hard to explain, but it's just nutrition is, you can't even move, you're just stuck. But no, no, I was never uh, on the street, never in the ring like, I don't want to go. It was never like this. You just don't, uh, because it's all, you know the work, you know, they just shake hands and go. It's like competition, really. It's mm -hmm. just, you don't have uh, animosity. Or everything you see on TV is just all for cameras. If you see these, it's, it's fake just to sell tickets. Maybe apart from Mike Tyson, I don't think anyone's really angry when they, uh, <laughs> <laughs> unless they're on certain things, you know, <laughs> certain uh, supplements. <laughs> and everything. <clears throat> Perhaps you can talk a little bit to what you consider the future of MMA in Dubai. I think my future is still, my plan has been since I got here to get an Emirati based or a Dubai based, GCC based, whatever the nationality originally is, but based here, living here into a major organization. 
I've done it already with one guy in one FC, but UFC is a dream. Mm -hmm. And also host a TUF, the Alma Fighter, Dubai based. This is obviously a dream, but we're still a wait, long way ahead because, a way, sorry, because you need a lot of selection just to get these and you need, uh, like you said, more facilities, mm -hmm. more competitions so that you can test them. So if it's one gym, you're not gonna, you, need, you need this competition, you need rivalries and it's just hard mm -hmm. because of stigma and sponsors. I do events, it's very hard to raise the money. And it's, it's coming out of my own pocket, so I enjoy it, but yeah. financially it doesn't make sense. Yeah. You know, you get older, you need, you've got responsibility. <laughs> so that's the only way. Uh, it depends all, all on the climate of the world, how Dubai prospers, it depends on who comes, how it grows. So these are all factors that come to in every business, so mm -hmm. sport as well. So it's hard to say, it's like saying how long's a piece of string. You can never answer, it depends on the status of Dubai in like six, seven years. But if it keeps staying like it is the hub, more people come here, this, that, and now it's so multicultural, the next generation, like you guys, kids in this unis, these are, yeah, there's more and more coming. And from when I first came, it was it's a total different scene, you know? Yeah. So you'll get it, maybe you will. But again, they have to have that hunger. So <coughs> that's they the thing. They have to have the passion for yeah, it. Yeah, the passion and the hunger. Okay. Who are some of the top fighters right now in, in Dubai and in the region, in your opinion? Uh, there's many, it's not it's like names, there's, a, there's like many talented kids. There is a lot from Russian backgrounds who've moved here, very durable, tough guys because they have a wrestling strong background in like the Caucasus, Kafkas areas. Uh, guys like this, we have uh, a few Arab fighters, Syrian, one from Abu Dhabi, Mabuli, he's doing well. Had Munir, he was very good. I think injuries have prone him to not fight again. There's a few, we have a good few boxers. But it's at that point where we need more promotions, events. Because mm -hmm. you need to, uh, there's all so much you can do in the gym, but you have to, you have the, uh, to get real flex. practical, you need practical. Yeah. You can train uh, golf all day, unless you actually com compete, compete, then yeah. you'll see. All the, these attributes are so different. I, have, I had guys who are so talented in gyms, but they walk in the ring, they the pressure. It. When they had the most talent, I knew a guy in London, he was by far the best in our gym. But he could not fight, cope with pressure, so he'd just freeze and then he'd lose, but the guy was superb. Mm -hmm. So these all matter, you know? So it's all about getting confidence and knowing how to deal with this. This is very important. And that's a pretty big factor, isn't it? When you see it the is. Elite level. It is. If in you any see, sport, like, you like Serena Williams, these kind of people, you don't understand how good they are to deal with that pressure and consistency. Mm -hmm. Like the LeBron James or I don't know, these, you know? Mm -hmm. Cristiano Ronaldo, they are elite. People can say or not, the way they perform day in, day out, they know how to deal with it. It's amazing. Uh, like, yeah. you know? Especially in combat, Floyd Mayweather, like his record. He knows the world hate him. He has to find it. And he still comes in, wins, and goes. Like, it's superb. Mm -hmm. That's a great insight. I yeah. totally agree with that. Um, <clears throat> you keep mentioning, you've mentioned several times fighters from, from Russia. Uh, so you think like a person's background, you said they had like a kind of a tough background. It's, That's really it's, important. It's, it's environmental factors sometimes. Yeah. Like you saw the old box in the 80s, like yeah. the slums of New York or poverty which pushes them if you look, look at like these stories like these Bernard Hopkins of Philadelphia these or the Mexicans the books is why they're so good they come from these kind of slums so they're hungry for it Russia too it's like these Chechnya Dagestan these kind of war ridden states where they have no hope it's just a place where there's wars or there's no opportunity so they go to a wrestling dojos and they just train that's the only way out so, and they're kind of durable, tough, because it's very cold. I was in Moscow, like, it was minus 20 a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So they're very great. Not like the Americans smiling all the time. <laughs> they're really, like, always angry. And yeah. So they come from this tough, hard upbringing. So they're very, like, tough kind of race talented. If you look at the Olympics as well, after the States, it's always between Russia, the States, and these mm -hmm. kind of nations. So they love their sport. And the government put a lot of money into it. Like, I think Putin, every gold medal, I think he offers, like, half a million dollars if you win mm -hmm. a gold medal. So that's amazing kind of like uh, push motivational for athletes. Yeah. In the UK, you win a gold medal, no one waits in the airport, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no one, there's no line, but in Russia, it's a big thing. Yeah. They, so they go into politics after. Yeah. Mm. So this kind of, they, their sporting background is very good, and the, the kids here are like sons of like ex wrestlers whatever, they'll come and they're like nine, ten years old, you see them, they're eye, they're like already, they have this attitude, yeah. they walk, you know, they walk in a way like they know, and it's just funny, it's like, they've got that thing, you know? Like, totally, I mean, the, now, is it possible to not come from that type of background and become a great fighter? Yes. Yeah. You have that talent. It's hard work. Again, it's, it's all about the person, how well they soak it up, how, how much risk they're willing to take. We have an MRI fighter called Muhammad Yahya. Mm -hmm. I've trained him. He's uh, like six fights, one loss, but 
he was not the most talented now, but he's working so hard. He's improved so highly. And Marathi back in. He's very tough because he puts the work in. He works, works, work. Mm. Whereas other guys might have more talent, but the effort he puts in, he'll beat the majority of people because he believes. Yeah. And with that belief and heart, it takes you a long way. If you've got that, it takes you a long way. So it's just a matter of time and just putting that time in and trying to get him sponsors because, again, to survive and live, he still needs to live. You know, so it's tough, but you'll get there. The, you can. Again, hard work still beats talent. It's all about discipline. If you're disciplined, you'll get very far. Um, I just wanted to take your opinion on the Dubai fitness scene in general. So MMA aside, what other sport do you think is booming in Dubai? Um, Dubai now, the CrossFit craze, mm -hmm. the fitness industry is huge now. Uh, with the uh, in introduction of Instagram becoming so big, it's a platform for people to sell themselves and things like yeah. that. So it's like in the old days, I used to watch the Miss Olympia, the, Arn uh, the yeah. Ronnie Coleman's. But, the, but these guys, were, but now you see guys who just have a six pack, they've got a good following and they become viral stars. Yeah, and some might not have talent, but it's, if you've got a good social media manager, you can... You can do anything. Yeah, don't get, I see bloggers here who just know how to put makeup on or whatever and they're stars. <laughs> or just pout and they're famous. So for me, real celebrity <laughs> talent's gone. It's if you're very good at marketing yourself, you can be a star. Like mm -hmm. the feel, if you're clever, you can. Um, fitness industry is good, but it's a bit corrupt here too. Uh, a it's little bit more commercial, maybe. It's too commercial. It's like I think LA in the eighties. Mm -hmm. It's like that. It's crazy. It's like <laughs> that. Interesting. And uh, yeah, it's like that. It's it's so big now. There's more gyms than people. It's like nightclubs yeah. here. There's more, and uh, everyone's a personal trainer. And you'll, I have students. I know. I'll see them. They'll do a few sessions with me. Then now I see they have a on the internet, MMA fighter, personal <laughs> trainer. Nah. And, but people sell it. In, in Dubai, it's like whatever people, it's just like a hearsay, mm -hmm. it goes. So the fitness thing, you have to be careful. You have to really study who you're training with, things mm -hmm. like that. But it's a huge craze. Uh, there's benefits and downfalls. There's a lot of uh, doping. There's a lot of this kind of epidemic where the guys want to be a lot of this. There's a lot of uh, girls want to have the silicone sure. butts. And they want to look like Kim Kardashian. You know, normal, it's just so there's a bad side to it, and they want to look good on Instagram. The whole life is having that filter. So, but it's booming. It's very popular now. Mm -hmm. CrossFit's got a craze. Uh, this that, but uh, it's just strange. I think it, it's kind of artificial. It's annoying in a way. You know, I just don't get. I don't look into it too much. You know, do our thing, and uh, I prefer the like the real. You know. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Well, your your thing is all about authenticity, mm. from what I can tell. Yeah. So, but uh, you still have learned how to do the social media promotion, mm. right? Yeah, from, you from have to respect. because uh, I could have, like, honestly, I have potential to go so much bigger, but I don't. There's certain things I always turn down. I hardly tweet. I had to do a photo shoot yesterday. I was delaying it for like three months. <laughs> Something I just can't do. But you have to keep relevant. Like our social mm. media is very popular. The gym. Yeah, I'm uh, looking at. I'm looking yeah, at. Yeah, we know how to. Uh, what to see and what to promote because I know what sells. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, you'll be careful you don't fall into those traps and it's just, you have to do something sometimes just to get that, but then again, I just, you have to, but it's just annoying, you know? It's, uh, <laughs> it's part of business. Uh, yeah, it's, part, it's business, it's changed. Like, uh, I remember the days Michael Jackson was famous, the whole world knew him, there was no Instagram. Yeah. But you yeah. could go to India, Africa, they know him. Now, <laughs> I don't know, for me they're not celebrities when I see yeah. it. They're like C class, you call B class, you know? <laughs> yeah. I used to look at the De, De Niro's or, the Madonna's, but it's just changed. The world has changed, so people look up to this. So it's just oh, changed, yeah. yeah. I'm old school, so for me it's yeah. different. You know, I'm just the old breed. But now I see my students, how they listen, what they're talking about. It's funny, you know? <laughs> they like these Instagram models. They think this, you know? Okay. Absolutely. Is there anything else you would like to add? Maybe any advice you'd like to give someone who's uh, hoping to start uh, fighting? Yeah, just uh, put 120% in and just... You have to give you all train and just... You're going to have good, good and bad times, but don't let it knock you. Like you, criticism's good. Just look to improve and take advice always from whoever's your coach, but also investigate where you train. Make sure you've done your investigation. Don't go because the gym looks nice or they've got a good Instagram account. Just look and see from references. What have, have they practiced what they preach? Who was, you've got to look into this. Don't, because many people make a mistake and go into a place where I see personal trainers, people who are training with personal trainers and put more weight on than they should be losing. <laughs> and like, yeah, they're just paying. So people just have some logic as well. Mm -hmm. And just, again, if, you've, if you're really hungry for it, put the effort, it will show. Yourself, you'll know. You, you'll, you'll, like, 
progress and you'll get to a certain point. You, you're your only critic, but you have to put the effort in. You have to take the criticism. The first months are very hard. You're going to be given up. You're going to be like, I can't do this. I give up. But mm -hmm. that shows if you can't deal with that, you can never deal with uh, the real thing. For sure not. It's like anything. Go to any bank or corporate place. <laughs> when stuff hits the fan, they can't just run out and go, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. They have to stay there and just recover what's going to go on. So it's the same as in every uh, industry. Mm -hmm. Going to have good times, bad times, whatever you do. So if you can't, quitting is not an option. You have to face it, you know? So I have bad times in the gym. You have to deal with bad customers, this, that, complaint. Yeah. yeah. You can't be, you have to just deal with it diplomatically and just, you learn. Running away gets you nowhere. It's just, and it's, it's all uh, experience of life.